Welcome to the Homeschool Mom Podcast, where biblical truth informs our everyday lives as homeschool moms. I'm your host, Janelle Knutson, a Christian, a wife, and a homeschooling mom to seven children. You can find the show notes for each episode of the Homeschool Mom Podcast over at JanelleKnutson.com forward slash podcast. Hello, moms. Welcome back to another episode of the Homeschool Mom Podcast. This is episode number 12, Hope for the Imperfect Mom. I hope that this episode will bring some hope to the mom who is feeling discouraged, weary, and imperfect. Did you listen to the last episode on parenting? If so, I hope it encouraged you in your role as a parent in the life of your kids. But I know that as we try to put those things into practice, we fail over and over again. It's like Paul says in Romans 7 verses 18 through 19, quote, For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh, for I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing, end quote. Can you relate to this, moms? You want to disciple your children like we talked about in the last episode, but you neglect yet again to schedule your days in a way that allows time to read God's word with your kids. You desire to discipline your children in love and not in anger, but you lost your temper this morning when disciplining your toddler or your teen. You have made it a goal to pray for your kids each night before you go to bed, but your weary body collapses into bed for the fifth night in a row without any prayers being offered up for your kids. The good you want to do is not being carried out, and the sin that you want to die to keeps welling up inside you. Is there hope for the imperfect mom? Yes, there is. Some of you may be in the beginning of your parenting journey. You are struggling to parent your kids in a God-honoring way that points your kids to Christ. You see your weaknesses and grow discouraged. Some of you may be further along in your parenting journey. Maybe you are in the middle of parenting teens, or maybe you've already launched a few kids into the adult world. Perhaps those of you further along in the parenting journey are looking back and feeling regret. You feel like you learned too late what God-honoring parenting looks like. You regret the parenting choices you made, and you see the negative effects on your parenting choices in the life of your teen or adult child. You wish you could go back and do it all over, but you know that is not possible. You are filled with guilt over what you did wrong and regret over what you failed to do. Is there hope for the imperfect mom who is at the end of her parenting journey or who has already launched her children into the adult world? Yes, there is. Let's open up scripture to see what hope can be found in God's word for the imperfect mom. I hope you know that there is a lot of truth and encouragement in scripture for us moms. I'm going to focus on three different areas, but I'm sure there's a lot more. So study God's word for yourself and discover all the rich wisdom God has for you. First, I want to remind you that our hope as moms is not found in what we do or who we are, but rather in what Christ did on our behalf and who we are in him. Let me say that again. Our hope as moms is not found in what we do or who we are, but rather in what Christ did on our behalf and who we are in him. Romans 5 verse 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Moms, we are sinners, and yet Christ died for us that we might be free from the bondage of sin. Ephesians 2 verses 1 through 9 speaks of this amazing truth. It says, quote, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind." But God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, 
even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming age he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works so that no one may boast. End quote. Moms, do you live in light of this truth that your hope is not found in what you do, but in what Christ did on your behalf? And then he didn't just take the punishment of our sins. He also made us a new creation in Christ. Second Corinthians 517 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. So moms, we must remember that our hope is not found in what we do as moms, but in what Christ has done on our behalf. Second, we need to remember that our good parenting doesn't guarantee our children will grow up to love the Lord, nor does our imperfect parenting mean that our children will reject Christ. But does that mean then that we just kick back and neglect our role as parents? No, not at all. Let's look into God's word to see what our responsibility is as a parent. First, look at Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through 9. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hand and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your house and on your gates. God is commanding us to teach our children to love God and to know his word. As parents, we are to bring up our children in the training and instruction of the Lord. And that's taken from Ephesians 6 verse 4. But there is no guarantee that faithfully teaching our children about God and his word will bring about our children's salvation. I want you to take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 15 through 16. It says this, For we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To the one, we are an aroma that brings death. To the other, an aroma that brings life. End quote. So as Christians, we have the pleasing aroma of Christ that we are to share with the world around us, including our children. For some of our children, the aroma of Christ, that truth that we share with them about God and his word, will bring about life, eternal life. But to some of our children, the aroma of Christ, the teachings that we share with them about God, will be a stumbling block and an offense to them that will lead to their eternal death as they choose to reject Christ. As parents, we are called to share the truth of God's word and the hope of salvation with our kids, but it is not in our power to save our children or to bring about sanctification in their lives. Our children have a choice to make. They can either accept Christ as their savior or reject him. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God has extended the gift of salvation to each of us, including our children, but they are responsible for believing in him. We should be teaching our children about God, but they must choose to believe in him. And we can't forget God's work in the salvation and ongoing sanctification of our children. Ephesians 2 verses 8 through 9 says this, quote, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. End quote. So salvation is a gift of God. It's not something that our children earn. It's not something that we earn for our kids by being good parents. It is a gift of God. Romans 8, 29 through 30 says this, For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. 
So what we see in these verses is that God chooses whom he chooses, and then he calls, saves, and sanctifies those who are his. Our children's salvation is ultimately in the hands of God. Moms, when you are feeling the weight of your imperfect parenting, know that your child's salvation is not dependent on you. I really love the way Mary Tripp sums this up in her book entitled, It's Not Too Late, Restoring Broken Relationships with Teenage and Adult Children. And I will have that book listed in the show notes. On page 20, she writes this, quote, Psalm 145 verse 4 describes the parent's task. One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. That is the calling of parents, to commend God's works to the next generation. Psalm 145 goes on to describe whole categories of instruction, God's works, acts, majesty, power, deeds, and all his attributes. Psalm 145 recommends many forms of instruction, commend, tell, speak, meditate, proclaim, celebrate, and sing. So the parent's role is to instruct with passion and conviction and pray with hope and confidence. That is where the parent's role ends. Salvation is of the Lord. She goes on to write, If you think about it seriously, you would not want your child's salvation to depend on your parenting. None of us could perform well enough to secure our child's eternal well-being. Our resolve is often inconsistent and our spiritual fervor waxes and wanes. Our insights into God's ways and truth are finite. Praise God, we can bank on something more powerful than our performance. In fact, God's resolve is sovereign and complete. End quote there. Aren't those words such an encouragement to us as moms? We are entrusted with the task of proclaiming Christ to our kids. And that is where our task ends. Now, I started this episode off with reminding you that your hope should not be found in what you do or who you are as a mom, but rather in what Christ has done on your behalf and who you are in him. Next, I reminded you that your parenting efforts will not save your children. While you are called by God to disciple your children, those efforts are not what save your kids. So finally, I want to address the glaring problem that we all face as moms, our imperfection. All of us have made parenting mistakes. We have said things we shouldn't have said and done things we shouldn't have done. We've disciplined in anger. We've neglected to share God's word with our kids. We forget to pray for our kids and we often fail to point them to Christ. As moms, we are well aware of our parenting failures. We know that we are imperfect moms and the weight of that truth bears down on us. We are overcome with guilt and regret and feelings of hopelessness. But God's word has hope for the imperfect mom. 1 John 1 9 says this, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So the first thing we can do when we realize our parenting mistakes is confess those sins to God and accept his forgiveness. This is great news for the mom who is overcome with guilt and regret, because when you confess your sin to God, he will forgive you. And as it says in Psalm 102 verse 12, he will remove your sins as far as the east is from the west. But our kids also know when we have sinned against them. So confess your sins to God and receive his forgiveness and then go to your child and ask their forgiveness for the sin you have committed against them. Sometimes your children will extend forgiveness to you and sometimes they will withhold that forgiveness. But either way, we are called in Matthew 5 verses 23 through 24 to seek reconciliation with those we have wronged. Even when our children fail to forgive us, we can find rest knowing that we have done what God has required of us. We don't have to hold on to that guilt or regret or shame. We can find rest in the forgiveness that God grants us through the work of Christ on the cross. And moms, don't underestimate how God might choose to use your act of seeking your child's forgiveness. It models for your children humility and the right way to respond when we sin against another person. It lets your children know that you also struggle with sin, 
but you know where to find freedom and forgiveness in Christ alone. Moms, all of us have made parenting mistakes. We are all imperfect parents. I can look back over my years of parenting and see so many moments where I was not obedient to the Lord in how I parented my children. I can tell you, and I'm sure my children can testify to this as well, that I have made many, many mistakes as a mom. I have failed so many times to be faithful to what God was calling me to do. But the best thing I have done is to acknowledge the times when I have failed and sinned against God and my children, to confess those sins to God and then to the children that I have sinned against. When we humble ourselves before the Lord and before our children, we are actually testifying to the goodness of grace found in the gospel, that we are all great sinners in need of a great Savior. We are imperfect moms, but there is one perfect parent, God, our Heavenly Father. Let's point our children to Him, for it's in Him alone that we find perfect rest and peace. I pray that this episode of the Homeschool Mom podcast was an encouragement to you. If it was, please share it on social media and with friends and family. Leaving a review is also a great way to spread the word about the Homeschool Mom podcast. And don't forget that the show notes for this episode can be found at JanelleKnutson.com forward slash podcast. All the scripture that I shared along with some additional parenting resources will be in the show notes. Thank you for listening and may you find true rest and peace in Christ alone.